Good evening everyone and welcome to the Invictus Racing League, the Performance League, the one and only Performance League tonight. There used to be two se well, two leagues of it last season, but now it's been shortened down to be one league. I do apologise with the delay of the stream. Uh, we had, did kick off late as well, so I do apologise with that. But before I carry on at the glorious race of Espanol Spain, I have got the one, the legendary Tim from the Performance League 2 last season. Good evening, Tim. How you doing, mate? You all right? How you doing, Malk? I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy that, you know, Craig wanted me here to uh, broadcast this, and I'm looking forward to working with you all season. Oh, fantastic stuff, mate. Fantastic. We could have the English-American... Oh, sorry! English-American banter, shall we say. But Mike's just spun out. And energy down stun the fastest lap with a 124 flat on the hard tyre. So... Uh, that's just when the tyres are coming now. But regarding this, I know you're joining the F1, aren't you? Like, as a, a new fan, how do you find in it so far? Well, I've been uh, finding it pretty uh, interesting, to say the least. And where I was commentating last, you know, last season, I was about to say last year, I was able to kind of get to know, get to know a few of the drivers, and I was get, I was able to see kind of how they race. And um, it's it's just really exciting. Honestly, I'm going to just go ahead and say it's been more exciting than watching the F1 races on TV. So, I mean, I'm just I, – I love that I'm able to be involved in this and that I'm able to continue learning and expanding my knowledge of Formula 1 because, you know, as you said, I'm a new fan. that I'm just now coming in and learning about this, but I'm overall a motorsports enthusiast. So it's just an amazing opportunity for me to be able to do this. Oh, absolutely, mate. And like I said, we'll try, I'll try my very hardest to make sure we get both best quality of commentary on the Performance League, on the Invictus Racing League channels. Not only I'm on my own channel, but also Tim is on the other channel as well. But before I carry on, Nigel Gash did get the fastest lap earlier on, Tim, with a 121.7 of the mediums. But Mr. Sky Z has done an even quicker time. Oh! Yoss! Yoss! Would you Yoss and believe it? Brilliant stuff, absolutely brilliant with a 120.8. Now, I will warn you, Tim, I do shout out out of nowhere with the quali the qualifying stuff, so I do apologise, Tim. <laughs> hey, you know, don't feel bad. I'm actually the same way. If you go back and watch some of the uh, earlier uh, some of the earlier races that I was um, commentating and really even toward the end of the season sometimes I would just get so animated about what was happening on track that I would just completely run out of breath but yeah you are right that Yas has set the fastest time with so far a 120.8 and Mr. Sky is in second that's actually a pretty decent gap uh, between uh, first and second for Yas there and I expect it to change as this session goes on because it looks like we have about six drivers still uh, left to qualify but um, already kind of getting dicey here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, Tim. It's just going to be an absolute belter here, whatever happens here. Good evening to everyone that's joined on my session here. Live and exclusive on the Invictus Race League with the brilliant Tim on the commentary box with me for the very first time. So the, the duo, the Malcolm Tim duo, MNT or TNM -T -T -M? or MNT, whatever you want to call it. But that'll be fantastic stuff. But... but <laughs> Bear in mind, mate, um, like I said, have you been to Spain? Have you know the track much? I don't know the track all that well, or at least not right now. I'm, I'm currently oh! watching. What I... happened? Uh, okay, who are you watching? I was just watching Scope. just lost it. I do apologize, Tim. I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but... But Scope has just completely lost one of the corners there. And now he, he's very, very lucky, lucky man here because his car's still on track here. So he's very lucky here, wherever happens. But um, sorry about that, Tim. Carry on. What was you saying about the, the Spain track? Uh, you, you're, you're fine for interrupting. Oh, I, actually, I'm watching Scope and he lost it again. And now he got into the wall. And now he has front wing damage. He's undoubtedly going to have to pit now. That's going to put a damper in his chances to get a pole here today, but we do have 10 minutes left in this qualifying session, so he has time to get back out there and put down a fast lap, but definitely Scopefielder having some issues here uh, in the early laps. It, excuse me, it was not Scopefielder, it was Sir Spud who just spun. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Hopefully he will bounce back as quickly as possible here, Tim. But regarding the, the track of Spain, 
Um, it's one of those tracks where at the glorious race of Barcelona Catalonia, which we will have 33 laps, bear in mind it's a 2.892 miles with a 4.654 kilometers. There will be uh, 16 turns, I believe, which uh, I'm just watching currently now. But regarding the tyre wear, the tyre wear is not great around here, if you want to answer that question. But the times I expect. I expect the medium tires to hit the 20s, which Yoss is doing, and Smith's Garcia to hit the hards on 21s. But if someone was doing, sorry, if someone was doing the the soft tire, which is the red tires, they've changed the tire wear, which is a, a confusing me so much. I don't know if it's confusing you a lot since last season here, Tim. What do you think? Actually, where I'm a new F1 fan, it's actually been a lot easier for me to follow along because now we only have three compounds versus what do we have about uh, five last year? Oh, absolutely. You or had, so. Yeah, we had like the hyper soft, super soft, ultra ultra, or hyper hyper ultra soft, whatever you call it, or super super soft, whatever you call it. And now we've got soft, medium, and hard tyres. But like I said, um, is there any drivers from last season that you commentated on, mate, um, that you would recommend watching this season? Well, definitely uh, Scopefielder and Yas. Uh, they were drivers that you definitely saw up front quite a lot in the uh, in the equal or the Performance League Two last season. And um, let's see here, as I'm looking down. The list. I am also seeing Luke Bailey, who was in that. But another one that I saw in the lobby, actually, there he is. Actually, he is in tenth place. Energy Dan, look for him because there, toward the end of the season, he was really making gains. And I even think that uh, at Monza he got a podium. So look for him because I think that he's starting to get a lot faster. Oh, okay, fair dues, fair dues. But I'll tell you now, since I've mentioned, since you've asked me about the Performance League 2 the drivers, the ones to watch out for is uh, Mr. Sky Z, who's won the Drivers' Championship twice, and his own, this is this will shock you, to be fair. We've got Yellow Flag Sector 2. Yellow Flag Sector 2, so I think that might be Dre Geo, who's just laying one of the drivers through. But, as I was saying, Tim, Mr. Skysey is the one, the driver who's going to be the man to watch or the wanted man because he's won the Drivers' Championship twice. However, how many race wins do you think Mr. Skysey had won over the two seasons of Invictus in the Performance League? How many races do you think he has won? Oh, brilliant stuff! Sorry, Tim. Hello, Tim. It Ex excuse me, I, I accidentally had my mic muted, having a little bit of technical difficulties trying to get back into the swing of things here. But yeah, as we were talking about him, I noticed that Mr. Sky has set the fastest time so far. But uh, ask me the question again, uh, were you asking how many races do I think he's won? Do you think he has won the last two seasons at Performance League 1? Do you reckon? You're asking me this, I'm going to say yes. So how many, how many did you, th oh sorry, maybe I've said it wrong here, but how many races... Uh, would you guess that he won a race or many races throughout the two year two seasons of Evictus in the Performance League? I'm going to guess about 20. No. How many? One win. One win, and he's won two Drive First Championships. That's Mr. But, consistent. Wow. So. Yeah, I, was, yeah, I was about to say that's a very consistent driver that actually, uh, if you are watching on the Invictus Racing League F1 channel, which is what I'm broadcasting on, you are currently watching him in that Haas, and I'm just going to say that's a very impressive stat, and I'm glad you told me that because I'm going to keep an eye on him. Uh, no matter where he finishes this season, I'm definitely watching him. Oh, fair dues, fair dues. But Locke said he's won one race out of... He would have broken the record. He's the only driver ever to never won a, a race in a whole season but still win the Drivers' Championship. And that was in the first season, I think, of the Performance League. That was just in starting the machine stuff. But uh, before we carry on, Tim, we've just given you a bit of... Oh! Brilliant stuff! Absolutely brilliant from SJD! Oh, brilliant stuff! Oh, I'm sorry about that, Tim, but this is absolutely belter! A 120.4 from SJD. Uh, Mr. Skycee did a 120.8. Josh is still on 120.8. 
Scarps done a 120.8 on the hard tyres. Colin Jay's done a 121.1. Aaron J. Spence did a 121.2. I'm losing my voice here. D uh, Dre Geo. Or Neo Geo, as I always call him. Of a 121.5 in seventh. Ferocious Dan is in eighth. The newcomer who's replaced Meg Lugpy uh, as of tonight. Uh, so he, uh, unfortunately, Meg Lugpy uh, could not carry on uh, due to personal reasons and stuff. So hopefully he, everything's all okay and well. Uh, Nigel Gash is in ninth. Uh, Sab's in tenth. Energy Dan in 11th. Luke Bailey's in 12th. Suspud. So Knightley Hudders Suspud is in 13th. Mike and LR Archie, 14th, 15th, respectively. Under four minutes 40 left on the qualifying. So what do you think so far, Tim? Well, I think that we're going to have a very close race because if you look, the second, third, and fourth place cars, you know, as you said, they're all running 120.8. So they're not separated just by tenths of a second. They're separated some by hundredths or even two of them there, thousandths of a second. And then you go up to first place with SJD, and he's got a 120.4, which is only four tenths. Uh, quicker than second, third, and fourth approximately. So at least the top four, I think we're going to see a very, very close battle. Oh, definitely, definitely. Based on looking at that, I think we're going to have a, a... Well, this is... Uh, bear in mind, guys, this is the equal performance uh, tonight, so the admins can make sure they pick the right cars in for during the league, for the, the actual performance car league uh, for the rest of the season coming up soon but Nitro Gas has just seen now it's just gone a little bit wide through the chicane part so he's going back into the pits now uh, Dre Gio or Neo Gio has always called him now uh, he's on like I said looking at the times to be fair Tim I mean based on Mr. Scorsese and Scope they've done a 128 120.8 and to be fair oh Oh, nearly from Dre Geo. He did a 120.5, a tenth off from um, SJD. So that's a cracking time from Dre Geo. Do you agree, Tim? Oh, yeah. Let's let's add five cars into that mix of who's going to have a very close race today <laughs> because I, I really just think that this is pretty impressive. I mean, it, it's not unheard of to see cars this close. I mean, especially, you know, in the real Formula One or in the real NASCAR or just any other racing series. But it's just I love seeing it because it's a good indicator of the speed of everybody and hopefully of how close they'll be running in the race. Oh, absolutely there, Tim. Absolutely. I mean, th bear in mind, this obviously it's not going to affect whatever happens. I mean, this is just the preseason races. So wherever you do, if you uh, rather, uh, rather you get the mistakes done and dusted first rather than during the season, because you don't want to, you don't want to have a bad start. Do you really? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, if you want to have, if you can control when you make your mistakes and where, tonight is probably when you want to make them because, you know, as you said, this is a preseason race, so this doesn't count toward the points, uh, to, you know, at the at the end of the season. This is, as you said, simply for the admins, and I guess, you know, it benefits the drivers as well to give them a sense of how quick they are compared to everyone else. So if you want to make mistakes, go ahead and make it tonight because this is technically just an exhibition race. True, absolutely, spot on there, Tim, absolutely. But um, like I said, I'm watching some of the drivers coming out, coming up under two minutes left. Now, what I normally do when I do my stream is do the countdown. So do you want me to do the countdown in after 30 seconds? You know, when you hear the countdown uh, sound, you'll hear it soon on the 30-second marker. But like I said, Tim, is there any drivers, do you reckon they'll shock the times? Do you think anyone will beat SJD's time? I'm not sure if anyone's going to be able to beat SJD's time. Uh, I mean, looking at the board, it'd be easy to say that the most um, possible driver... Well, now we have Aaron JS in second place. He's got a 120.4, and that is not very far off of SJD's 120.453. So just as we're talking about that, I think Aaron might have the best chance at this moment. At the moment, yeah. I mean, I would start off with the... I mean, if it was me, I would start either the medium or the hard. If you're on the softs, they don't... They only last seven laps. But because the guys have already done their qualifying laps, so this will compromise. They might only do about four or five laps on track. So eight laps may push in it for the softs. Uh, or they could do a two-stop for the soft tyres. So probably have to wait and see what happens on this situation but here's the countdown theme coming up now no not what I meant bad timing bad timing, bad timing. <laughs> oh 
Uh, okay, so what we were saying a minute ago about when the drivers want to make mistakes, well, today is oh! also the night that commentators want to make mistakes. What has happened, Malk? A scope has just got pole, pole, pole. Scope has got pole. Brilliant stuff, absolutely brilliant. Um, who's next? What, Mr. Scorsese? Mr. Scorsese's going to do his lapping. Mr. Scorsese's going to do his lapping now. Most, majority of the drivers have all finished. We got uh, Scope, who's just got pole. Can Aaron G. Spence? Aaron G. Spence won't improve his time, so he's still in third at the minute. SJD still holding on for second. Where's Mr. Scorsese? Mr. Scorsese still doing everything possible here. Yellow flag set to three. Now, Aaron has, Aaron has pulled into the pits now, oh! so it does appear as though Archie, Archie is now up in second. I see that. Oh, wow, that is amazing. Actually, amazing times being set here at the end of this session. I didn't expect us to break into the 119 categories. And I'm going to say I'm very surprised to see that the mediums are faster than the softs in qualifying. To, yeah, to be fair, it depends on the driver and the, the way that they handle the car. If they are doing no assist as well, that is impressive, to be fair. Because you would hit 118s on the softs and then 119s on the mediums and then 120s on the hards, which majority, which some of the drivers... Mike's retired from the session, so uh, Ms. Scorsese and Scope are the only ones left. I think Scope's not going to improve his time, but it depends on what Ms. Scorsese can do. Do you think Mr. Scorsese will get into the top three, Tim? Will Mr. Sky get into the top three? Well, he's going to have to do something and oh! do something right now. And he did. He did with a 120.386 on the medium tires. Mr. Sky is now our third place qualifier. Oh, brilliant stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, fantastic. Oh, magnifico. Magnifico. Oh, this is not the Italiano, but this is a Spain, a Spaniel. Nice, uh, nice on that one. But I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed. And to the... go back, go ahead, Malcolm. I'm so sorry. No, it's all right, mate. Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed the commentary tonight here, Tim. What was you going to say? Sorry. Well, you were mentioning earlier. Do you think that anyone can beat? Uh, SJD's time and really at that moment it looked like he absolutely had the pole in the bag because no one was challenging him but then notice here he is now not even lining up on the podium so that is absolutely an amazing late run by scope builder Archie and Mr. Sky of course good job to all the drivers here but when you're talking about pole position that was an amazing run by those top three drivers to beat that 120.4 Oh, brilliant stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, fantastic stuff there. Uh, Scopes, like I said, with Scope. Archie, Mr. Scopes in the top three. SJD in fourth. Aaron J. Spence in fifth. Dragio has got a five p uh, position place penalty. Uh, Yoss has got seventh. Sab got eighth. Colin J got ninth. Frosh Stan got tenth. I could not remember who the rest was underneath because uh, we were trying to rush there. But um, looking at it so far, Tim, is there any drivers that you've kind of changed your mind on the who you think would be a contender for the drivers or maybe the construct i mean i'll mention about the constructors in a minute but who do you think is going to be your top three drivers for the season i know it's only one race in one season one race in and i know it's a tough call but just as a guess what do you think your top three could be well i mean you definitely have drivers like uh yoss and scope builder and I feel like you definitely cannot count them out. But someone that definitely surprised me in this last qualifying session, Archie, not taking anything away from him, but in the um, performance league from last season, I remember that he just sort of he, – he ran in the back. So I, I just assumed that he was kind of getting his bearings down. But now you see that he is lining up third, correct me if I'm wrong, in this race. And that was actually a surprise to me. So maybe we should be keeping an eye on him in this race tonight and maybe even all season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's the one to watch, to be fair. Same with Scope. Same with Mr. Scorsese. And now it's only one race in, and it's so much to take in as well. So anything could happen here regarding whatever happens this season. I mean, it could be that Mr. Scorsese could win another Drivers' Championship by not winning another race again so, during the performance leagues. It's going to be uh, frantic stuff there, whatever happens here, Tim. But... I'm quite. I'm going to look forward to see how Archie can try and challenge, as well as Scope, as well. Bear in mind, as I say, a reminder, guys. This is an equal performance uh, cars tonight and next week because the admins are going to try and assess what driving pace they're on for the rest of the season in two weeks' time. Um, 
Are you looking forward to it, Tim? I'm absolutely, absolutely looking forward. It's going to be an amazing season, and I look forward to being here for every single race and being able to commentate with you and then, of course, commentate for the F1 League on Wednesdays. This is going to be an amazing season for Invictus Racing. And I want to ask you now, Malk, while we're doing the formation lap, it's a 33-lap race, and you were talking about tires earlier and how yes. the soft tires can last about eight laps. Do you think that in this race tonight we're going to see drivers maybe – pulling tire strategy and trying to stay out longer on tires so that, you know, and then maybe pull in, get soft tires or something along those lines in order to try to get them a little bit of an advantage later on in the race. Uh, it depends. I mean, if you're a medium tire, you could last up to probably about 12 to 15 laps, I think, as a guess. And then you've got the hards, which definitely go about 18 laps, about 18, 19 laps. 20 is a push but 18 definitely for the hard tyres so for me personally I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be a one stop race but if you're in the softs you might you've got you've got no choice but to do a two stop you can't do, can't do softs hards we'll have to wait and see what happens here tonight but wish you all the best yeah. of luck Tim when we do the countdown as of now we've got one lights two lights three lights four lights five red lights and we are off go 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 great start there from scope this could be a two in the bed situation here oh Riscosi moves up to second place Archie's made a slow start there oh what a move from Riscosi but Paul's from third to first what a move there a little bit of contact there from the back there. Um, madness stuff here. What's been your action so far, Tim? Currently looking at the lead, we have the two Haas cars running one and two, but right now, Archie in that Alfa Romeo is putting an absolutely enormous amount of pressure on oh. that Haas of scope fielder. What has happened now, Malk, as we see Aaron in the Ferrari coming up and forth? Uh, there's been a contact. There's been contact from Nigel Gash. Um, and some of the other drivers here. He's lost his front wing there. The silly bag moment is not happy on that situation. Oh, my days. There's the Williams driver. Uh, the ferocious Dan. Ferocious Dan just hit the back of um, one of the Ferrari cars. I believe it was Mike's car. So he's lost his front uh, lost a bit of his front, front wing stuff. But now ferocious Dan and Nigel Gass will have to do a early pit based on the media ties that they were on earlier on. Bad start from Frostan and uh, uh, Nigel Gash. Now, while you're watching the battle and the contact in the back of the pack, Mr. Sky has now got out to a lead. He is now in approximately a one-second lead, 0.7 to be exact. Scopefielder is currently eating into that lead, but it is Mr. Sky, Scopefielder, Archie, Aaron JS, and SJD is our top five. And Mr. Sky, you were mentioning him earlier, he might... He might walk away with this win. It's very early to tell, of course, but so far he seems to have a pretty fast car. Yeah, he's got the quickest car at the moment here. So I was just watching as he was talking about it, Tim. I mean, to be fair, looking at it, it depends on how everyone else can manage the pace. It's more. It doesn't matter if you win many races. If you're not consistent, you will not win the Drivers' Championship or Constructors. You need to have that momentum going. You need to have that consistency. Do you agree with that, Tim? I absolutely agree with that, and you know, as we were talking about earlier, where I follow NASCAR, it is it is the same concept, and really, it seems like it's the same concept in any motor racing series that you know you're racing for points that you need to remain consistent because you have to get those points on the board. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I'm just watching some of the battles at the back there. I've just seen we might have a train going on. We might have a one, one, two, three, four, five, five car battle here in a minute uh, from. Uh, from Saab, so it'll be the Saab train, uh, Saab, Energy Dan, Colin, Colin J, Dre Gio and Mike having a ding-dong bow here. We could, I mean, I've, during the streams, I always say we might have a three, two or three in a bed. Scope's got the fastest up of the race with a 124.2, Tim. Schofielder is eating into that lead of Mr. Sky. It was 0.7 seconds about a lap ago. Now it's down to only half a second, and Schofielder is oh. wanting this lead, but he's not going to push it. What has happened now? Uh, just seeing some two in a bed situation there between Luke, uh, Luke Bailey and Sir Spud. Luke, I am the f you use the force, Luke, on that one. And get Sir <laughs> Nightly Hood of Sir Spud on that one. Uh, we've got Colin J trying to close in on energy down for eighth place here. I mean, who are you watching at the moment here, Tim? 
I am currently watching what you were talking about, the Battle of Luke Bailey and uh, Sir Spud in that Mercedes. He was trying to go wide a couple corners ago on the outside, but he did not make it work so far. Luke Bailey is still in that 12th position ahead of Sir Spud, as now we're going to go up to Dre Geo. As it appears, he almost went off the track, but he keeps it on track. And just ahead of him, we have Colin J and Energy Dan, uh, the Mercedes and the Racing Point, racing pretty close, almost Ooh. nose to tail. Oh, did close stuff here. I was just watching what you were saying there, Tim. This is going to be a belter. There will be DRS coming up in this, ne in this next lap here. So we might have to go back to the top three in a minute but i want to see if colin j can try and close in on energy down for eight or try and do it before bear in mind and bear in mind energy down is on the hard tire so he's going to go long on the tire wear but colin j needs to get past him as quickly as possible scope did get the quickest lap of the race but he's two tenths behind uh, and, uh, Mr. Scotty, but colin j could have a chance here on energy down here energy down's already got a defensive move He's just holding on there, but we've got four car power here. Brilliant stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Out to you, Tim. I'm watching, I'm still watching the battle between Energy Dan and Colin J, and it is actually really close. And you said that the DRS is going to be activated this lap, and I do agree. Eventually, we will have to revisit those top three, and actually, I did momentarily, and Scopefielder is just ever so slightly still eating into that lead. He almost doesn't need DRS, but I suspect that as soon as DRS is activated, Scopefielder will inherit the lead within a lap or two as we still see Energy Dan and Colin J battling out and we're actually going to ride on board with Colin J because he has the best view of what's going on here. Yeah, I'm just watching it from his point of view here. I'm still watching. We might have a few car barrier for the first DRS straight here. Oh, do it, man. Oh, I wait, I looked at it from the camera view there. Colin J, we've got a four car barrier. Oh. Dragio nearly we hit the back of Colin Jones. That could have been disaster stuff here. This is a belter of a race here. Oh my days! Tim, brilliant stuff. Uh, absolutely brilliant. I just sneezed. I had to meet my mic and sneeze, so uh, I'm a little discombobulated right here. <laughs> but uh, you see, that that's just what happens. The race gets so exciting. I have to sneeze right in the middle of the action. Oh. Why are you, why are you sneezed? Yeah, could it be? Oh, I thought there could have been a battle here. But tell you what, Mike's made a mistake here on 11th place. This could be a chance for Luke the Force. Luke the Force, Star Wars there, Mama dear, in 12th place here. This is going to be a belter of a maze, of a race, of a maze of a race here. Brilliant stuff. Oh, I don't even know what I'm saying next. I might retire after this. <laughs> oh. But after you, Tim. While you were watching that, I checked in on our leaders, and Scopefielder has now uh, shortened that lead. He was down to 0.3 seconds. Now he's back up to half a second, but he is ever so slightly with oh. each passing lap closing in on Mr. Sky. As now I see we have a yellow flag in Sector 2. What has happened? Uh, something must have happened. Dreji has gone wide. He's gone off the track there. So something must have happened with Dreji. Yep. Watching him right now on my screen, he just pulled out of the gravel trap. Lucky he didn't get stuck there. Now he's pulling away, but he is rejoining this race in the 13th position. A very unfortunate at, um, event for Dre Geo. Did you see what happened? I, 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 I only briefly saw him went off track going up the hill, pardon me. Going up the hill. Sab's pitting already. Oh, we might have a two in a bed. Colin Jay's going to try and close in on energy down for seventh place here. Uh, Sab's just going to drop down to 12. Oh! Two in a bed! Two in a bed! He's oh. using that DRS! Oh, brilliant stuff! Oh, he's not holding on! He's not holding on! Energy Dan's holding on! Oh, I thought, no! Oh, that could have been nasty stuff there! But Colin J's holding on there! Brilliant stuff! Brilliant battle! Brilliant holding on there from Energy Dan! Energy Dan would be thinking, what do I need to do to get the train off? It's the Energy Dan, Energy Dan train now! Uh, team. Amazing defensive driving from Energy Dan as he is absolutely looking in his mirrors, looking behind him, just trying to hold off Colin J. But Colin J just giving it absolutely everything he's got. And I'm honestly surprised that Energy Dan has been able to hang on this long on the hard tires. I almost think that Energy Dan is just taking up the racing line, thus preventing Colin J from finding a suitable way around. But he is going to eventually. Colin J is very determined to get by him as we're going to ride on board with him and watch. Yeah, while you're watching that there, I'm going to have a quick look at the top three while you're watching that, too. I mean, this is a 
the three-way battle for the top end here. Mr. Scott is still holding on for first. Schofield is in second place. We might have a two in a bed from Mr. Scott. It'd be a push for a three in a bed, but this could be a two in a bed. Still not enough speed. Mr. Scott may only have got the, the straight line speed, but Scope might have the beneficial of the cornering speed. But Scope's really closing in on Mr. Scott. Connor James moved up to seventh. Do you agree, Tim? Yeah, I actually went and watched, and apparently I chose the wrong time, but I went and watched the battle for the lead, and now Colin J has in fact gotten, got in front of Energy Dan in that racing point. Of course, Colin J in the Mercedes, and now he is pulling away, not surprising, as he is on the medium tires and Energy Dan is on the hard, but eventually, as you said, we're going to see Energy Dan move up the field a little bit due to pitch strategy because of those hard tires. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But bear in mind, Energy Dan will probably have to pit on lap probably around lap 16 to 19, depending on how the tie wear. We've got yellow flag set to one, Tim. Yellow flag set to one. So something, something must happen on Froshistan. He's dropped down from 13th to 15th. So something must happen from Froshistan on that situation there. I won't have a look yet, but I just wanted to see this battle for the top three. I might have to switch back to Mike, who's trying to close in on Energy Dan after uh, Colin J has overtook him. Currently looking at that battle with Mike and Energy Dan. Energy Dan is is still ahead of him by a couple car lengths, but it looks like Mike's is just ever so slowly trying to eat away into not really a lead, but that eighth eighth place gap. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Extra D's got a five seconds penalty for speeding the pit lane. He did not want that at all. We got a red ball that, to give him wings to try and close in on Sir Knightley Huddersfield spotter who's got the DRS as well. But Luke has got the force in him to push in too. Could have been for ninth place, but we might have a three. So Spot's got wide there, but he's still holding on. He's still holding on for turn three, I believe. Coming up to the end of the, sec the first sector here. Brilliant stuff here. Brilliant battles, whatever happens here, Tim. Very brilliant. Currently watching that battle with Luke Bailey. Going to revisit the top three here in just a moment, but this is just too good to turn away from as that Red Bull of Luke Bailey is really putting the pressure on Sir Spud, and he is not giving up, but neither is Sir Spud. Spud knows he's there, and Spud is putting Ooh. absolutely amazing defensive maneuvers as, yeah, the Red Bull almost got into the back of that Merc. Yeah, I was just saying, oh, unbelievable. Oh, what? this could be a move. Two in a bed, two in a bed situation with um, Luke Bailey. The force is with him, always. But Sir Spud is going to try and go on the side, inside. Oh, my God, that was a light, light there. It looked like there might have been even some contact. Oh, I no. Don't know. And Sir Spud spins. He spins. He is in the grass. Sir Spud is in the grass, off the track, and through the gravel trap. He is now rejoining this race, but no longer in the position he was in. He is rejoining in the 10th position. Such an unfortunate mishap for Sir Spud. Just looked like he got too loose going to that corner. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was watching it as well there. So this is uh, hopefully, I don't know if Sir Spud we might have to pit. Yeah, he's pitting now. Oh, Mike, late break. Late break. A little bit of contact there between himself and Energy Dan. Energy Dan should gone back up to seventh. Late break in there. Sir Spud's got a five second penalty for speeding the pit lane. Uh, so here's an interesting While story. you were watching. Yeah, while you were watching that, Archie is now taking second place away from Mr. Sky as Scopefield is in the lead by about half a second. And it looks like Archie is wanting to take that lead away, but he has half a second gap to make up, but he is looking for a line. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised about Mr. Sky. Do you think, here's a question for you, Tim. Do you think Mr. Sky, oh, Energy Dance lost it. Energy Dance lost it up the hill. He's lost it up the hill, and now Mike has got a chance to move to seven, and Luke has gone up to eight here. Sorry about that, Tim. The question I was about to ask you was, do you think Mr. Scorsese has lost the tyre wear already after eight laps of the mediums? It's been eight laps, and he had a pretty decent lead there early on. I almost feel as if maybe he tried to run just a little too quick. So I think it's very possible that, yeah, his tyres have just started to wear. He just maybe wasn't able to manage them as well as other drivers. Of course... There is also the alternative that he might just be trying to save his stuff now. 
Yeah. I'll, I'm looking at the ERS mode here. He's still on two. He's trying to build it up, but Yoss is in the same. But he's only got less ERS mode of 22% uh, at the moment. Here. But while Mr. Goes, he's got 52%. So he's got a chance of pulling away through the ERS, uh, through the, DR, not the DRS straight here. But we've got a four car battle here, Tim. Four car battle here for four first place on the debut of our duo commentary. What do you think so far after 10 laps of this race? I mean, I think it's been absolutely amazing. We've seen some really close racing and some really clean racing. Usually when cars go off track, you know, there's going to be, you know, some uh, some hurt feelings here and there. But so far, there hasn't really been a lot of contact today. And it's just been a lot of hard racing and close racing, which is what I love to see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm not, I'm not familiar. I, I know the NASCAR series and stuff, but I'm not like, like, a big fan of stuff, but I bet you it's kind of the similarity stuff, isn't it? Uh, from this racing, do you agree, Tim? <laughs> well, NASCAR has its own issues as far as uh, passing, but I guess all racing series do. But yeah, the way that they're running so close, when you watch a NASCAR race on a road course like Sonoma or Watkins Glen, it actually looks about like that, honestly, because the cars are very close together. They're only about half a second or so apart. And that's what makes for great racing, I think. Just, you know, having close cars, because racing is a close quarter, you know, a close quarter sport and at times a contact sport. So it just makes for great, great racing when they're able to be right there near each other as Mr. Sky has pulled out of the pits now. And here in a minute, we are going to see what tires he has put on. He has, in fact, put on the hard tires. Mr. Sky has pitted. He has rejoined the race in lap six. He is now on the hard tires. Oh, okay. That, I reckon he'll probably go up to lap 25, 26, I think, and then pull on the uh, the softs at the end, I think, to pull to get the fastest lap. I reckon it'll be a two-stop for Mr. Sky. Unless, unless he does 22, 23 laps on the hards, which it's a bit of a push, I would say. Do you agree with that, Tim? It is a push, but I have seen drivers do it. I do not remember the name right off. I want to say it was Scope Builder, but I'm not sure. Do not quote me on that. But there was a race in Mexico in the Performance League last season where everyone except for the winner made two stops, and he made it on a one-stop strategy by saving his tires. And until later on in the race, he had no idea that he was putting himself in position for the win. He was just, you know, I talked to him after the race. He was telling me he was just trying different things, and it worked for him. So maybe we're going to see something like that today. We we'll have to wait and see what happens here. This could be a frantic stuff here. What, uh, Luke Bay is trying to close in on Mike now for fifth place here, and this could be a belter. Oh, and nearly got there, but not much battle there so far in this race we'll go through the standings now we've got scope in the lead in first place we've got yoss uh in second place we've got archie or well, archie 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 on that one in third place we've got mr sky c the va va voom the french guy in fourth place you got mike the civilian legend oh, i was calling the civilian legend if you tell him that, he's an absolute legend on that one, Tim. Uh, you got Luke Bailey in uh, sixth place. If the force is in with him, as always, in sixth. You got Aaron J. Spence is in seventh place. You got SJD uh, is in eighth. You got uh, Energy Down in ninth. Colin J in tenth. Saab is in eleventh. Nigel Gash is in twelfth. Suspud is in thirteenth. Frosch stands in fourteenth. And Dre is in fifteenth place. And Scope and Yoss have both pitted on their scopes. Got a five second penalty for speed. Roy. Oh, I've noticed as well, I don't, I don't know if you've been on the game much on here, but I've noticed there's been a quite a few penalties regarding the speed, uh, the speed entry into the... Oh, Mike's gone wide! Bobby, Mike's gone a little bit wide through this, the chicane section. Uh, Luke Bay is going to the pits. Uh, what about that other, that other Ferrari of Aaron is going to now put pressure on Mike's as I see I changed and I saw he went very, very wide in that final corner. Yeah, he's gone wide there, but oh! Aaron Dispense! Oh, I was worried that... Now, I, I feel like that was a situation where Mike decided that Aaron was faster than him and that he just let him go. Because otherwise, I feel like there would have been a lot more uh, fight on Mike's part. But I see what you were saying. I was, I was also afraid there for a minute that maybe they were going to make some contact. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But 
luckily touch wood like tapping wood now hopefully there'll be um, like luckily there was no issues there no tissues as we speak but scope is still holding on for first archie's trying to close in under a second there but like i said we've got a four car battle here again for four, for the top top four at the moment here. but yoss is more attacking mr skycy than archie is to scope do you agree with that tim uh, I apologize. Um, I did not hear that. Can you ask me that question again? Yes, all right. Uh, do you th based on the situation, Yoss is more closer to Mr. Scorsese and he could do the, over the overtake here compared to what Archie doing with Scope. Two in the bed. Looks like there's going to be a move now. Oh, what a move. There is a move as the Renault goes around Mr. Sky. Yoss goes right around Mr. Sky. I think that answers your question right there, Matt, as that was an incredible move and great driving by both of them. No contact whatsoever. Just a clean pass going into the first corner. Oh, brilliant move there from Yoss. Absolutely there from Tim. Brilliant stuff. Absolutely. Belter. Uh, oh, absolutely. Tim, the legendary commentator. I'm going to call, him from, call you from now on, mate. A proper legend. Even though we've only just debuted for the first 14 laps of the season on that one, so what legend you are, mate. <laughs> uh, Mr. Sky C still holding on for fourth, trying to close in on Yoss again for third place. But I think Mr. Sky is going to try and go all the way here. I think he's going to try and save those tyres. I don't think he's trying to attempt to get first because 20 laps, do you agree? 20 laps, it's going to be, I know I've probably said this, sorry, earlier on, but do you think 20 laps is, is a bit of a push? in your part if you've gone gambled for it? I truly cannot say. As uh, when I played the 2018 version of this game, I would run 25% races. I'm now only starting running 50% races. So my knowledge on the tire wear, I, I don't have a good feel for it. But what I do want to point out is Energy Dan, he started this race on the hard tires. We expected him to maybe move up the pack. But uh, we've seen pit stops now, and now it looks like the top five have pitted for hard tires, and he hasn't really moved up much at all. So I think that starting on the mediums or the softest some of these drivers have done were actually, was actually the better choice than starting on the hards. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my God, Luke Bailey's gone off the track. Luke Bailey's gone off the track on sector three. Something must happen there from Luke Bailey. Um, I don't know if there was any contact with him. He made a mistake up the hill or the gravel part there, but... Mike has, has pitted from the mediums to the hards. He did pit, He did do 13 laps on the medium tyre. So I did guess between 13, uh, well, um, maybe 15 laps of the medium tyre, but it might depending on if he was started on the mediums and had two laps of it. Depends on how, how it goes from that situation there, Tim. But um, so far, so far on this, we're not even halfway. We're not even halfway. We're just probably about another lap or two away from the halfway marker. But who's been your driver of the day so far while we get the the, the counting, shall we say, or the picks of this, the races tonight? Well, I'm going to have to definitely say Yas because earlier on in this race, I noticed that he was he was running about sixth place. And I was thinking, oh, man, he's not going to be able to make that up. But now we see him running in third. Of course, there oh. has been some pit strategy going on. And what has happened, Malk? Oh, Mr. Scorsese could have had a chance to overtake Yoss on, as you was mentioning about Yoss to be the driver of the day so far at this race. But this could be a belter. Uh, Colin James moved up to seventh, passing Energy Dan in the DRS straight. But Energy Dan may have a chance to overtake Colin Jay, but because Colin Jay's got the DRS straight now. Madness stuff, and I'm going to lose my voice here if I don't be careful here. Madness <laughs> stuff here. Tim, carry on. We were we were watching the same battle as I noticed that uh, coming out of that final corner to complete uh, the last lap that, uh, you know, the Merc put himself in position, Colin J did, in order to pass that, uh, for, not Force India, excuse me, um, Racing Point machine, and then he just absolutely made the move before they even got to the corner, and now Colin J is absolutely pulling away from that from energy dan now energy dan of course on those hard tires he has 15 laps versus colin j having only four laps on his tires so definitely newer tires coming into play in that battle yeah absolutely stuff uh we'll have to wait and see what happens here in this situation but i'm watching mr sky see try to close in on yoss still but that but that was a great battle there from colin j and energy dan as you were saying earlier on there tim but 
like I said, if we're on the halfway marker now of the, the Espanol Spanish, the Barcelona, uh, the Catalonia track, as always, well, Catalonia is always thinking of Barcelona FC football club on that one. But like I said, the, um, the track itself, it's going to be frantic stuff here. And it's been a belter of a race here. This, if this is what it's going to be like for the rest of the season for the performance type cars, I would not be surprised if I reckon Scope, Archie, Yoss and Mr. Scorsese will probably battle it out for probably for like the Williams slash Sauber cars or you know what I mean like the lower type cars um, in this uh, the, the season coming up do you agree with that Tim? Uh, you actually cut out for a minute in my uh, headphones I'm sorry could you uh, ask that again? Yes yeah, alright um, Looking at the top four, do you think they'll be in, what well, I say, lesser car like Williams or McLa not McLaren, sorry, but like, um, I don't know what's the next, Force India, I think it is. Uh, do you think they, they could be in that category, that type of cars for the performance type? Do you agree, Tim? Perhaps, perhaps. Uh, we're we're going to have to wait and see. You know, of course, time will tell, but I think it's a possibility for sure. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But... I think at the moment here, Scope's doing a fantastic job here, holding on for first to try and pull away from Archie, Archie Barchi. I'm not saying Archie Barchi as in ding dong bow here with the cars at the moment, but he's still still doing a good job here, holding on in second. Yoss is trying everything Ar he can. But, sorry, carry on, Tim. Oh no, you're you're completely fine. I'm actually watching the same battle you are with Archie and Yoss right now, and Archie is I'm noticing he's absolutely driving that car on the edge, using every bit of racetrack and then some to try to keep that position. He definitely wants a podium here, if not a win. I, of course he wants a win, but with Scope Builder being two point seven seconds ahead, I'm not sure if that is a possibility. At least at the moment is Yoss! Yoss has spun, he has spun and he's in the grass, he has hit the wall, wing damage, Yoss's day is uh, is officially done. Very unfortunate for Yoss, his, he had one of the fastest car here, here today, I don't know what happened, maybe he lost connection or he simply just spun, but Yoss, a DNF for today. Uh, I just saw the car on the right hand side there, I didn't see the actual incident there, but it's just when you told me there, uh, Tim, Locke said it's, I saw the car, he must have, must have got up the hill, hit the kerb, lost the car, and he must have hit the wall, and like, silly bang, like bang, and the wing and the wheel has gone on that one, so Yoss, who had a magnificent race so far in this race, has now had the first DNF of the season, of the pre-season races of the Invictus Racing League, the Performance League. There's only one league uh, this season. There's not two leagues from last uh, from last season. Because, uh, like I said, Mia and Tim are doing the duo for the commentary for this season, which will be live and exclusive. Yeah, as what Tim would like to say on that one. So I bet you're laughing your head off there when I did the yeah moment on that one. Uh, uh, maybe a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay. I I'll... actually usually don't say yeehaw. Oh, okay. Fair dues, fair dues. Uh, I'll, I'll put me down on that one. Yeehaw! No, 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 no. <laughs> but yeah, I have to wait and see what happens here. But we've got a bit of car split now. Look, look, not much of a gap as much. But the only thing that's closest battle so far is Mrs. Sky Z with two seconds. At the moment, that's the only battle we've got close in. But um, looking at it so far here, have you seen the calendar coming up this season? What's your thoughts on the uh, calendar? Have you seen the calendar this season, Tim? Uh, I I have not actually. I was I was actually too busy just worrying about when the season started that I neglected to actually look at all the seasons in order. So uh, go ahead and talk about that for a minute here. So while we're waiting for, I'm just going to load up the calendar stuff. Oh, Sab's dropped down to 11th. What's happened to Sab? Oh, Sab. Looks like he's going to suffer DNF. Not sure what happened. Do you have any word? Oh, I've just seen the the there, but we've got yellow flags after first sector, I believe. It's I'm in sector two, and Spud went off the track. Uh, he didn't wreck, but he did go off the track. He's running very slow right now. Not sure what's going on with Sir Spud, and not sure what's going on with Sab either. I think Sab's done exactly the same as what happened with Yoss, unless I'm mistaken. I'm waiting to see if there's any yellow flags here before we talk about the calendar. 
situation here. So, so Spud's gone wide there a little bit there. Yeah, Sab has done the exact same thing as what happened with Yoss. Because we ju I'm just watching so Spud. So Spud's gone really wide. He's going the wrong track there from what I'm watching there. But uh, looking at it from the point of view here, Tim. Um, we've got two battles, slowly battles coming up soon. We've got Mr. Skycy and Archie for second and third. And then we also got Luke and... Uh, Mike for 8th and 9th respectively on that one so while I'm waiting for that I'm just waiting for the calendar to come up now like I said we were at Spain for pre-season 1 we got Mexico next week for pre-season race 2 but that's the finale of the pre-season so Spud has retired so we've had 3 DNFs Tim within the last now do you have any idea what actually happened to Spud is actually it doesn't look like well actually yes he has retired but um I'm currently watching him right now. He's they're in the pits and they're working on the car, but now it the game has changed for me to watch Scope Builder. It is official Sir Spud DNF. Do you have any idea what happened there? I think when when I saw him earlier on, when he went wide, he had some he had a ten second penalty, so I don't know whether he was still gonna carry on to race him, but I think there may have been an incident before that which we didn't see on camera here. But Looking at it from everyone's point of view, we've got a slowly battle going on. We've got Frosch, Stan, and Dre Gio for 11th and 12th while we'll trying to get the calendar up now. While we're waiting for this battle coming up, <coughs> pardon me, we've got Mexico next week. That's the finale of the pre season races. That's the last chance for the guys to make sure that they are all prepped up and ready to go. And then we've got Austria round one in two weeks' time. M Monaco, which we've never raced at all. For a very long, very long time, so this would be the first time in ages we've seen Monaco back in Invictus Racing Leagues. We've got France, we've got Japan, Brazil, Belgium. Then we have the week break. Then we've got Australia, China, Bahrain, Singapore, Canada, and then Germany for the finale race um, of the Invictus Racing League uh, for the calendar for this season for all leagues. Um, not just the performance league, but everyone else uh, for the no assist and also the equal leagues, which, uh, Tim, you're doing the F1, aren't you, tomorrow? Is that correct? Yes. So, Tim will do the F1 live exclusive. I think Energy Dan will be doing F2, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, and F3 will be me, as always. Uh, SJD has gone into the pits to, to, for the fresh medium tyre. Nigel Gas has done 20 laps on the hard tyres so far. Um, so that's interesting stuff. But as I was mentioning about the calendar to you, Tim, has there been any interesting ones while we're waiting, while we're waiting for some battles going on? Well, you mentioned Monaco, and you mentioned how Invictus hasn't raced in Monaco yet, so this will be the first time. And right after the schedule was released, I was looking in the chat that, that we're in on uh, PSN here, as we have a yellow flag in Sector 3, unknown what's going on right now. But uh, where you say that we're going to be racing at Monaco, I just have a sense that there's going to be a lot of hurt feelings and a lot of DNFs at that track. And I believe even Yoff said that he is actually a little concerned about running Monaco or a little nervous because, as you said, none of us have uh, – Invictus hasn't raced there before. So it's going to be a very – I'm going to say it's going to be a very interesting experience to say the least, and the rest we're just going to have to wait and see. Yeah, we have to wait and see what happens here. Uh, whatever happens in this situation here but looking at it from this point of view here with the Monaco we've never raced for quite a long time so as you said some of the drivers will be absolutely nervous and they don't want to make any mistakes here but uh, before I carry on we might have a two car battle here we might have a two in a bed situation here between Mike and SJD Dre Gio's retired from the session oh SJD moves up he moves up one of the McLaren drivers has gone off track. Oh, that was Dre Geo. Dre so, Geo in 12th place with a DNF. We now have four cars out. Um, absolutely madness stuff here. We've got, you still got yellow flag set to one. Yellow flag set to one. So that might be still be Dre Geo situation here. But we might have a three-car battle here soon. We've got SJD, Mike, and Luke Bailey uh, coming up soon for the three-car battle. But it might be Luke against Mike soon in this battle here because SJD is going to try and pull away from Mike as quickly as possible on the fresher medium tyre. So he's going to go all the way with the medium. 
tires. He might do. Actually, here's a question for you. Do you think SJD will get into the top four based on everyone's pits, or do you think it's going to be a tough struggle based on 10 laps left? Uh, with only 10 laps left and SJD running in seventh position right now, I don't see him getting into the top four at all. I highly doubt that any of our top three to five competitors at the moment are going to pit because they do not want to give up that precious track position. So I think that the best thing that they can do is stay out right now and just run on the tires they've got, where SJD on the mediums, I I don't even, he might be able to get by Nitro Gash. It's a two second gap between uh, SJD and Nitro Gash. Or no, excuse me, it's a two second gap between Mike's and SJD. So Mike's might be able to get by SJD, but uh, SJD, I don't even think he'll be able to catch Nitro Gash. So unless there's a couple of wrecks, I don't see him getting into the top four. And right. even Mike's, he's now starting to drop back just a little bit. I think it's those hard tires versus those mediums. Yeah, it's, I think Mike's lost because, of the, as you said, the tire wear and the tire type is a difference there. But for us, that's got a three-second tire penalty for multiple warnings. Scopefield did the fastest lap of 122, I believe. So that's a cracking time from Scope here tonight. Uh, like I said, good evening to everyone that's joined the session. I hope you came well. Uh, we are live and exclusive at the the Espanol Spain track at the Catalonia track. Oh, no, Luke nearly lost it there. The force was not with him. Zoom, zoom, like with the, the, light, the, uh, the lightsaber trying to hold on there. But like I said, with the Red Bull, that gives them wings on that one. But hopefully it will give them that energy boost there. We'll have to wait and see what happens here. But we might have a battle here. SJD is going to close in on a nitro gash here for sixth place here, Tim. Do you want to carry on with that? For sixth place, nitro gash in college. And now it looks oh! like the riddle of SJD is making a move on nitro gash going into turn one. Is he going to make it stick? Nitro gash has the preferred line. Nitro gash spins it into the wall as nitro gash that Red Bull into the wall. A DNF for nitro gash as SJD will, in fact, get that sixth position, if anything, by default. Oh no, Nitro Gash is on 23 laps of the hard tyres because he was trying to not cause any accident between himself and SJD. Nitro Gash, oh he's gone wide, he's lost a bit of his front wing there so like I say you'll have to go back into the pits. Um, but like I said we had 15 started, we've got 11 remaining, fresh standers in the pits now. Hopefully we will see some more action coming up soon. Like I said, I, I really do hope, and I'll say this before, Fresh Stan has retired from the session now. I will say this to you now, Tim. Nigel Gash is one of the unluckiest drivers I have, I have known. I mean, he's one of, the, one of the greatest guys I have known for many, many years. He, he tries to do the Midlands accent. When I say Midlands accent, because I'm from the Midlands in the UK, that's why he just takes the, uh, the, the try to do the best uh, Midlands accent. And he does it spot on there, to be fair. But like I said, Nigel Gash is the only one who I really do, for me, I really do hope he bounces back from this race. And I really do hope he does well this season, to be honest, Tim. As do I. He ran a few races in, or maybe even the full season, because I actually missed part of the season. Last uh, in the performance league last season, but uh, I digress. He ran some races, and he would always run about back of the pack. And I'm going to say right now, when I see drivers running in the back of the pack, never, ever do I think that they're not a good driver. Never do I think that they cannot put down a quick lap. I always just assume that maybe it's not a good track for them, or maybe they just haven't gotten their bearings uh, in the car yet. And I believe that he even had a few uh, incidents where maybe he would spin you know, just lose the car in a corner, and you're right, he is just pretty unlucky, and it would be brilliant to see a comeback for him, especially considering he had, what was he running, approximately 7th or 8th at the time, which was a decent run, and now he's all the way back down to 10th, which is the last car on the track so far with the five DNFs that we've had. So very unfortunate for Dr. Gash, and as you said, I really hope that he's able to rebound, at least for his sake, because it would just be a nice feel-good story. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, for me personally, I really do hope, uh, and us and you as well, Tim, to make sure that Nigel Gash will bounce back uh, this season, uh, wherever happens here. I'm sure he will. I'm, he's definitely a fighter there. But bear in mind, like I said, 
while we're talking about uh, nitro gas we've got some of the other drivers who are battling out for the top three at the moment and we've got this guy to try and slowly try closing on archie now for second place we've got another battle going on between mike and luke bailey for seventh and eighth respectively so we've got six lap five to six laps remaining here uh yeah five to six laps remaining of this frantic uh, Spanish Grand Prix for the preseason race of the, the Performance League. The, bear in mind, guys, a reminder, this is the, uh, they're doing it in equal cars so that it's easier for the, the admins to pick uh, the, the perfect cars for the, the, the start of the season. Probably. But like I said, Tim, I mean, watching this. Oh, also, make sure you like and subscribe to the Invictus uh, from my channel on the uh, WFC underscore 07 channel and also the Invictus Racing League, the F1 League, which Tim is commentating on at the same time as of now. Make sure you follow, guys. Like I said, Tim, absolute legend, whatever happens here tonight. I appreciate it, Mount, and it's been really fun working with you two. And maybe we're both going to be a pair of legends this, this, uh, this whole season. Craig called us a dream team, I believe. Dream team. Uh, dream team, you know what, the commentary team on that one. You'll we'll have to wait and see what happens next. Bish bash, beeping bosh on that one. Quadruple Bs on that one. So, like I said, we mentioned Yost to be the driver of the day at the halfway point before he had the crash, before he had the DNF. Who's been your driver of the day at the moment here now? Your opinion. It's definitely going to have to be Schofield just because he has been able to run you know, a debatably flawless race as he is in the lead and he's held the lead for most of this race pretty much ever since he's inherited it. He hasn't lost it except for maybe during the pit stops. And of course, a uh, close second and third, and I'm not just Ooh. saying this, I'm not just going by the running order, but a close second and third goes to Archie and Mr. Sky as they have, uh, Archie has ran top three all day and Mr. Sky, he dropped back there for a little bit, but then he's he was able to rebound to what is now looking like at least a podium position. Definitely. I mean, uh, like I said, this has been a cracker of a race, whatever happens here. But can I just remind you, Tim, Nigel Gash is on the, the quicker soft tyre. He's, he's had the fastest lap of the race. And that's what I like to see from the, the flying Nigel Gash in the red ball. That gives him wings on that one. Uh, just waiting for the fastest lap. 122.6. So that's the fastest lap of the race. Uh, beating scopes by... Four, uh, four thousandths of a second there, so he's on fire at the minute, Nigel no, Gash, but he's got 30, 38 seconds gap between himself and an injury down to try and catch back into ninth place, but it could, like I said, because of the penalty situations and the gap there, I think it's a big of an ask there from Nigel no, Gash to get back into ninth here, but would you, would you see any action going on? Who do you think there'll be, will there be any moves in the next four laps, would you say, Tim? Uh, to be honest, I do not see that happening at all. The closest that might happen is Luke Bailey in that Red Bull and Mike's in that Ferrari is Luke Bailey is 1.5 seconds and Mr. Sky is about the same behind Archie, both of them about one and a half seconds. So if they're going to make a move, they're going to have to step it up and go right now. But I really, unless there is a wreck or a spin or something, I don't see our running order changing from now until the finish. Okay, so uh, I'm not gonna I'm not be a betting man here, Tim. But Tim's gambling. I'm sure he's gambling to say that what you see is what you're gonna get for the for the, for the standings here. I think there'll be a shock between Mr. Scotty and Archie as well as Luke and, and Mike battle here. But it depends on Luke's tie wear because he's already on 16, 17 laps. Excuse me, 17 laps of the hard tie here. But looking at it now, I think Mr. Scotty is gonna have. To, a chance to try and close in on Archie now. But Archie's got more of an ERS mode than um, Miss Scoisey has. What was you going to say, Tim? Sorry. Uh, you're fine, Mount. Uh, the S is the section that um, Mr. Sky just went through a few laps ago. He actually took a bad line through there and he lost quite a bit of time, but he has since gained that and he has cut the lead down or the gap down to 1.3 seconds. And I was almost expecting him to uh, maybe uh, mess up in in that section again because you know I've, I've drove this track on the game a few times that is a difficult section those s's i really don't like them and that honestly would be my worst section of the race if i was running so 
you know, very good job that time around by Mr. Sky. And if he can get the DRS, he has a shot at, at Archie. It's just that, will he be able to get the DRS in the two laps that are remaining? It just depends on how he can capitalize on it, mate, to be honest. I mean, looking at it from his point of view and looking at it from Archie's point of view, I think Archie's got this nailed in the bag with the second place. SJD had a, got the fastest lap of the race with a 122.6. Bear in mind, SJD and Nigel Gas did have a three-second time penalty for multiple warnings. They, didn't want, they did not want that at all. They did not want that at all. But like I said, we've got three laps remaining. Mike's left the session. Mike has left the session. That could be a disconnection issue. Yeah, it's a disconnection issue. He's still driving in the AI. So this means Luke Bailey will have the chance to overtake Mike here on track here, which did not want that to happen. Yeah. Is Mike going back well, in? Well, I mean, I... No, I, I don't believe so. His car is currently ghosted, at least on my screen. And he's just dropping like a rock. I mean, as you said, it looks like the AI has taken over. And, I mean, I guess I was wrong that, um, obviously, um, the finishing order has changed or the running order has changed a little bit. Um, unfortunate for Mike's. He was running, you know, seventh, which, um, you know, even though we're not running for points today, that would be, in a regular race, a points position and a solid run. But unfortunate for Mike's, definitely. Oh, definitely there. But it could compromise a little bit here if he doesn't get back in quickly because Mike could drop down to even ninth here uh, from Energy Dan. Uh, coming up slowly, close, closing in on Mike here. We're on the penultimate lap. We're on the penultimate lap of the Spanish Grand Prix. Lap 32, 33 of the Vintage Racing League, the Performance League. Uh, uh, with the host, with the most, Tim, the legendary Tim uh, from the Performance League 2 last season, joining the duo with me this season. And I tell you what, this is a, a brilliant duo, whatever happens here this season. Uh, and I can't stop saying this season because it's just a habit here, Tim, uh, <laughs> on that one. So. Um, what do you think is going to happen next? Do you think there will be more shocks or do you think... Oh, we're on the finale lap. We're on the finale lap. Scope's already yeah, crossed. white flag. White flag in the air. One to go. Scope Builder has crossed the line. As you were saying, Matt, my apologies for the interruption. And Mr. Sky has dropped down. He had about a 1.5 uh, second deficit. It's now increased to two seconds. So with this being the final lap, I don't see any way that Mr. Sky is going to get by Archie except for a big mistake by Archie which really all he has to do is ride around and make a few decent corners, and Archie will, in fact, in, um, clinch this second place as Scope Builder, of course, is in the lead by a full 10 seconds, an almost flawless race ran by Scope Builder here today. Absolutely impressive. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant stuff there from Scope. Archie as well, done a magnificent job there as well. Um, and also Mr. Sky C, the driver's champion from the Performance League one last season and the double double driver's champion uh, from the two seasons of the Performance League one. So be interested stuff to see what happens here, what happens here. But the last corner here coming up and can I just say a massive, massive congratulations to Scope Fielder who's just won the um, the Spanish Grand Prix, the preseason race. He had a five second time penalty unserved. So he had so Archie would go down to five. He would be absolutely livid because I think he would have been a close call between himself and Scope if he can try and call it. But, like I said, Tim, brilliant drive from Scope, Archie, and Scorsese for the top three. Definitely. And I'm going to say that in my short time commentating for Invictus, that was the first time that I've seen the leader get a penalty and still walk away with the win. But that's just because he had such a big lead i mean there at the end it was a 10 second lead so with that penalty just put down to five to you know only 5.9 seconds that was just a fantastic lead and i'm almost wondering you know he only had his tires were only a lot fresher than archie what helped him get that lead what propelled him to that lead uh i think it was because he had that Momentum with the car and momentum of the track and it could be mis well Archie and Mr. Scorsese were having a ding-dong battle near, Like probably about during that race Scope just pounced to that moment and just try and pull away if the two drivers are battling out the, And the, the other driver's got a good chance of just pulling away from that because you don't want to get tussled with it if you know what I mean 
So it's a magnificent bat, like magnificent drive, whatever happens here from Sko. So Sko could be the one to watch this season, depending on what happens here, Tim. Definitely. And, you know, as I said at the beginning, you know, Scope is definitely a driver that you do not want to count out, along with Yoss and Archie. He's already showing some strength. And there were five DNFs, six DNFs, I believe, actually, in this race. So there are six drivers who have not yet shown their full potential. So let's not count anybody out just yet. Definitely, definitely. We are uh, just going to do a quick race classification. Race classification for the Spanish Grand Prix for the Performance League, what, uh, Performance League for the Invictus Racing League. Uh, we've got Scope in first, Archie in second, Mr. Scorsese in third, Aaron J. Spence, brilliant drive from him in fourth, Colin J. in fifth, brilliant drive from him, SJD as well, brilliant drive, six, Luke Bailey is in seventh, uh, from starting in twelfth, but fair play, and Energy Dan starting eight, in thirteenth, finishing eighth, Mike. Uh, finishes in ninth. Nigel Gush is in tenth. Ferocious Dan, Dre Geo, Sir Spud, Sab, and Yoss. They have all had the uh, DNFs. Well, Mike did have the DNF during that race, but I'll just say because they were in the top ten at the time, the other races were DNF'd confirmed at the time. So they've just done this, the driver's uh, penalties at the time there, but. Um, like I said, while we're waiting for this, the screen to cover, we won't be doing any interviews during the pre-season races because there's there's no point uh, for me, Tim. I, I I there's no point doing the interviews until we do the actual round, the, the proper league rounds. Um, I hope that's okay with you guys. I I agree, you know, because uh, this is um, you know, as you said, this is more or less just for the admins and and also the drivers to kind of see where they line up and. Uh, Later on in the season, you might be the one having to do most, if not all, the interviews just for the simple fact that uh, for some reason I have issues with connection with some of the other drivers. Like I was mentioning earlier, uh, Yoss, I can never, ever hear him in a lobby. Okay, fair dues, fair dues, mate. But like I said, we'll try and get that sorted. Um, if not, I'll try and do as much of the interviews um, in when we get to that point in two weeks time in red in round yeah. one but uh, and of course I'll, I'll be there alongside you you know i mean i i definitely want to talk more with the drivers it's just i just hope that we don't have any connection issues that uh, hinder us yeah absolutely um madness yeah well it'd be fantastic stuff whatever happens sorry i was just reading the comments from mike saying uh i was the only one dis what the hell i was the only one disconnected uh, don't know what happened there from Mike, so he did get a disconnection, so that would have classed as a D oh, I don't know whether that classed as a DNF or probably 95% of the race, he still would there, but he would have had some points, whatever happens there, without the disconnection um, anyway, but uh, what's your thoughts of the race here, mate? What did you think of the race? There until the very end, it was a very close racing for the for the majority of the race and really uh, the biggest reason that uh, the field got so spaced out was just because of all those dnfs that occurred late in the race but overall the race was very entertaining and even though we had a leader for most of the race being scope fielder he was never really out of reach until the very end when he built up that 10 second lead and at the end of the day i think that's what you really want is even if even if you have a winner lead every single lap, as long as everyone else kind of had a chance, you got to say that it was at least a decent race. Oh, absolutely. I think, like I said, Scope did a decent race. You had Mr. Scorsese, the, the driver's champion from last season in the Performance League 1. Uh, sorry, the, yeah, the Performance League 1. Um, and then you got Archie, who's done a brilliant drive as well. So the top three drivers um, from this race. But, like I said, you can't just determine this race as going to be the final decision-making, whatever happens in the, the season coming up, because there's always going to be twists and turns throughout the rest of the season. Um, Mike's just commented saying he had PSN network error, so I, I hope PSN uh, will be sorted out soon for you, Mike. I really do. I, hopefully... Uh, get that sorted for you as well but i tell you what i know i kept pestering you tim with the drive of the day for the final time between us two who do you think is your final drive of the day properly after what you watched 
properly, I am definitely still going to have to give it to Scopefielder because he did not start out in the lead. You know, uh, Mike's had a lead there early on, but Scopefielder, once he inherited the lead, he basically just kept it and he just, you know, got out to a big lead there at the end and still won even with that five second time penalty. And that's why I say that he ran an almost flawless race. So at the end of the day, you definitely have to give the driver of the day to him just because of of the amazing performance he was able to put on. Okay. I will go with you on that one, Tim. The duo will agree that Scopefielder is our driver of the day, the commentator's driver of the day. But obviously, you guys can decide what you want to do, who you think is your driver of the day on that situation there. But, and like I said, with the driving as well, I know this is was equal car performance, because as I said uh, every time that this is to help out with the admin stuff, but it's easier to find out what car these guys are going to be picked on and the the admins will have to have a, a long thinking after two after the second race to based on the performances from the two races but they have to look at the pace and look at the performance it's going to be difficult because i've i've done like uh the the car allocations and it's one of the toughest jobs ever and I always remember that it's always the toughest job ever. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen it before, but you have to like pick the, the right cars for the right drivers for the right tracks. And you gotta think, oh, you gotta think, will this will he go okay in this car? But will it will the other driver that he's battling against be in the same car or, or a quicker car or a slower car? You have to be choices and it's gonna be very difficult for the admins after the next week's race. Do you agree? Oh, for sure. Um, I am very glad I'm not an admin that has to make these decisions. I am, I am a commentator for two, for two uh, <laughs> yeah, series this season. So I'm glad that I have an easier job than them having to choose, you know, go through all the members and all the racers and choose, you know, what cars and everything. So uh, hats off to all our admins who uh, make that happen. Oh, fair days, fair days. But if you do. You'll know what's happened next. Uh, I I've just got some comments from the Twitch stream. Uh, Mike says, My first online race on the 2019 game. Almost finished. DSQ. Uh, sorry, DSC. Disconnected. Sorry, not DSQ. I do apologise. It's DSC on lap 31. Mike says, Haha, they've done the allocation for many, many seasons. He doesn't want to do it again. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens there, Mike. On that one. SJD's joined says, Hi, Mark. I've missed your dual, dual set. Uh, <laughs> dual set tones. Oh. Um, yeah, it's uh, they, they, I always do like some tones during the streams when I always used to do them, like uh, with the Rick Astley uh, songs that uh, uh, that SJD's team is joined is doing as well. But but like I said, uh, this season is going to be very diff very difficult for the drivers, and I think it's going to be an exciting one. Um, is there any you know through the calendar? You know the calendar stuff. Do you think is there been any uh, tracks that you think that could be the crucial points during the season, based on what I've said earlier? Uh, even though Monaco is very early on in the season, I feel like that's definitely going to be a crucial point because, as I said, I believe that we're going to see a lot of DNFs, a lot of wrecks, a lot of collisions, maybe even some hurt feelings. Who knows? Maybe even we're going to go into the chat after that race and see a bunch of people cussing each other out because Monaco is just a really tight track. So I feel that even though it's early in the season, it could very well be a race that's going to make or break the rest of your season just for the simple fact that um, either it's a, it could be a mental uh, game to where you're just, you don't feel there mentally because you don't have the momentum or simply just because you have a DNF thus not getting points and then that coming to back to bite you later on in the season so you can never count monaco out as being um i guess a uh putting a spanner in things Ooh, so monaco even though it's race two monaco is the one to watch i think in about three weeks time i believe three yeah three weeks time of the track so we'll have to find out if it could be make or break i know it's only early days early doors uh george doors early doors on that one so um Balok said, have you got any final thoughts of the race tonight or final thoughts of the drivers from tonight that you thought would like to say before we wrap up this fantastic uh, stream tonight? 
just want to say hats off to all the drivers. Fantastic drive to every one of you. Uh, even the ones that had DNFs, the ones that made mistakes, just absolutely fantastic drive. 15 cars, almost a full lobby, you know, almost a full field. That is amazing. That's what we want for this year. That's what we want for this season. That is definitely what we can ask for. So thank you guys for coming to racing with us. And, you know, thank you, Craig and Matt, for letting me comment, commentate with you. And thanks again to the drivers for putting on a really good race. Fair dues, fair dues, Tim. Fantastic stuff. Fan fantastic commentator, the legendary commentator. That will be the legendary duo and legendary stuff, whatever happens here. But uh, before I wrap up here, we've got a few more comments here. Uh, SJD is not happy with the Monaco. He say it could have been done later on in the season uh, to give more time. Uh, Mike says he tried no traction control and quality spun at the end of the, the lap, so I switched to medium traction and ABS to try to finish the race. And uh, Mike says Monaco will have three finishes um, at Monaco. So, like I said, Monaco is one of those tracks where you have to be a bit on the ball and you can't make any silly mistakes because you would ruin it pretty much there. But with that tonight. Because tonight was at Spain. It's been a fantastic race. It's been a, a joy to come back into the commentary box to watch the Performance League, as always, for many, many years. And uh, like I said, with Craig, uh, did the commentary with me for many, many seasons. And then now, um, Tim's joining me for this season for of the England versus USA duo banter galore. We'll have to wait and see what happens next <laughs> during the season on that one. But... Um, but like I said, I'd like to thank Tim for, um, for his fantastic commentary tonight. And, uh, and well done to all the drivers tonight. Well done to Scope for finishing the race, to win the race tonight. One to watch, I think. It could be, uh, Mr. Scott will have his hands full if he can try and stop him from this season. And so, but like I said, I'd like to thank all of you guys. I'd like to thank the commentator. Uh, commentators the comments from mike and sjd i wish you all the very best of luck whatever happens this season and uh tim thank you very much mate you've been an absolute legend mate Th thank you malkin gonna throw out a quick apology to the guys watching on the f1 twist channel as i try to address your comments i see that we have gotten five but for some reason i cannot pull it up to view the comments Trying on my phone here, cannot make it work. So apologize. I'm not trying to ignore you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. And Mal, again, good commentary tonight. And it has been really fun. No, no worries, mate. No worries. And always remember, always, always, always remember, stay classy. See you later, guys. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week at the glorious, glorious race of the Mexico. Mexico. I can't stop saying it. But cheers for that, guys. Much appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.